value stocks and the ETFs linked to them outperformed growth in 2022. And some observers believe this trend of value over growth is just getting started. Today's audience requested ETF matchup is a quadruple header. It's an orgy for value investors. We've got four value equity ETFs from Advantis, Vanguard, State Street Global, and Schwab. So who wins the battle? And what's the best way to play value stocks? Find out right after this. Welcome to ETF Battles. I'm Rhonda Leggy. This is season four, and we're so glad to have you watching. Keep your excellent ETF battle requests coming. Send us your ETF ticker symbols in the comment section below or on our Twitter feed, at ETF Guide. If we choose your battle, you, choose, you win your choice of an ETF Battles coffee mug or a T-shirt. We've got a special announcement. Be sure to register for our upcoming retirement planning webinar for 2023. We've got one in January and another one in February. If you're nearing retirement or already retired, you should be there. Avoid distribution pitfalls, reducing taxes, maximizing your Social Security income, protecting your retirement nest egg. These are just some of the key topics that will be covered. Attendance is free to all of our audience members, but space is limited. So visit the description section below. We've got a registration link to claim your spot. So today's ETF battle was suggested by a viewer named Christian Peralta. And like I said earlier, it's an orgy for value investors. We're going to keep it PG-13, but this may be X-rated for growth investors. We've got a quadruple header between four value-oriented ETFs from Advantis, Vanguard, State Street Global, and Schwab. Here to help us break down today's contest, we've got Tom Ferrisagas with Bloomberg and David Durking with TheStreet.com. Judges, thank you for being here. Glad to see both of you made a safe landing into 2023. Yeah, Happy New Year. Glad to be back. Hey, Ron. Good to be back again. So our four battle categories are cost, exposure strategy, performance, and then we got our mystery category. Mystery is where you, our judges, can pick a single factor or multiple factors that you feel are going to play a crucial role to this contest. Our judges can also nominate wildcard ETFs if they feel there's better choices elsewhere. They can also opt for split decisions. It's up to them. I've got the battle scorekeeping chores, and at the end of the show, we are going to declare an overall winner. We'll go one by one through each of our categories. Also, keep in mind that none of the battle outcomes on this program are ever predetermined or known in advance by myself or our judges. So let's kick things off with the first category, which is cost. Tom, please get us started. Great picks uh, by this, you know, by your listener, um, you know, because values definitely come back. And as you'll see, there's a lot of different value ETFs. So you could get value right, but you, you can get the product wrong or, you know, you can have a very different experience from other value investors. But this one's pretty clean cut. You know, it's got some good representation by different issuers. There's an Avantis product, uh, State Street, Vanguard and Schwab. Um, you know, surprisingly, Vanguard isn't the cheapest in this category. So it's, there's a pretty clear winner here. It's the Schwab large cap value ETF, which is SCHV. It's four basis points. I think the next closest is like 12 basis points. So there's a pretty big advantage there. So this one's a pretty clean cut winner uh, to Schwab. That's a strong start. Thank you, Tom. David, you're up next. How do you see it when it comes to cost? Yeah, Tom's got it right. I really don't have a lot to add to this. Schwab uh, is easily the cheapest in this group. It has the lowest trading spreads as well. It's the biggest fund by far of this group of four. So no need to, to really add anything. Schwab is the winner. That takes us to our next category, which is exposure strategy. David, you're up. Give us your analysis. Yeah, Tom kind of alluded to this already. Uh, all four of these funds focus on value, but it's really the definition of value that's important uh, in knowing actually what you're buying and how these funds are defining value. Uh, in each one of these four, their strategies are substantially the same. They're focused on valuation metrics like PE ratios, price to book, price to cash flow. Uh, all of them focus primarily on the U.S., and there's not really a lot of overlap between them. So you really have to sort of dig into uh, to understand what you're buying here. But uh, the outlier in the group is VFVA. That's uh, That takes an all cap approach, whereas the other three focus pretty much just on large cap. So it's got a 40-40-20 split between large, mid and small cap. So it's a little more diversified there. 
Um, if you're looking at value, though, uh, the Vanguard fund comes out ahead. It's uh, It's got the cheapest valuation across all the metrics. I think it has a P, forward-looking P-E ratio of around 9 right now. So uh, you don't want to put all your eggs in the valuation metric basket. You don't want to choose just on that. But, I mean, if you're looking for pure value, VFVA is the cheapest. I like that it has a little more diversification. The small cap exposure is probably helping with that value as well. So I'm going to go with the Vanguard Fund as my winner in this category. Thank you, David. Tom, you're up next. How do you see things when it comes to exposure strategy? Do you agree with David's analysis? I do, Overon. I like that stat, the, sort of the value within value. That yeah, I didn't realize the Vanguard one was even the, the cheapest on a valuation metric. But um, yeah, like he mentioned, a lot, most of the or all of these are going to take some sort of composite approach. Now, I get it, if you want to get into the different, this one uses PE or price to book or whatever. For the most part, they're all pretty similar metrics and they're all composites. So you're not really relying on one uh, definition of value, which I like. I, I think sometimes you can see a lot of differences in just relying on one single uh, definition. Uh, and like uh, David also said, I like VFEA because of it. it is a little bit broader. You're going to get some small cap in there. Um, the Spider product VLU, which is based off the S&P 1500. Again, that one has a little bit of broad exposure as well. So just keep in mind with these, you are getting a little bit of like a mid cap ish tilt to some of these ones. Um, from the sector exposure, for the most part, they're all going to have pretty heavy financials. That's just traditional value. It tends to go towards that way. But I think there's two outliers. One, VFEA has the most energy exposure, which has been really interesting for the last year or so. So they have like about 14% weight in energy, which is by far the highest of, of all the the ones in this list. And then Avantis, AVUS, has the highest tech exposure too. Um, so just Keep in mind that for the while they do all skew towards financials, you do get a little bit of outliers in those two sectors. Um, it's a close one, you know. Sometimes you have to get into the weeds with some of these products, uh, and it's. But I'm going to give it to VFVA, the Vanguard one. I like that it's a little bit broader. I like the energy overweight, uh, and it's also a little bit more uh, concentrated. It's only got about 600 holdings. The other ones are. You know, the State Street one has over a thousand, same with the Vantis. So I'll give this one to the Vanguard one as well. Well, our judges have agreed on all of their points up to now. Will they agree on the last two categories? That takes us next to performance. So, Tom, you're up. Give us your take. Yeah, I was actually really shocked by this. I thought the Vantis one would be better only because of Vantis's history that they're sort of ex-DFA guys. This is really what they specialize in. So in 2022, it was actually the worst performer of this of this bunch. Uh, the Vanguard one was the best one. As you start to go a little bit longer term, the Avantis one, State Street, and Vanguard start to pretty much converge. So not the pretty similar. The Schwab one completely drops off. So I think it's pretty easily over the long term. I think you can get rid of the um, the Schwab one from a performance perspective. But given the energy overweight even heading into this year, I like the Vanguard one as well. Um, you know, you don't really think about, and, and it's active too, and sometimes you don't really associate Vanguard with active, especially like quant active, what this is. But um, I like their performance, especially over the last year. I like that they still maintain the energy overweight. Uh, so I'll give performance uh, to the Vanguard one as well. Thank you, Tom. David, you're up next. How do you see it in terms of performance? Any, any of these ETFs stand out to you? Which one is best in your viewpoint? Yeah, I, I agree with Tom on this one. Uh, VFVA has been the outperformer. Um, I took a look back over the common inception date, which goes back to late 2019. That's the first point where all four of these funds existed. Uh, performance is is pretty similar. The Vanguard fund comes out ahead, but as Tom said, uh, Schwab was the big laggard in this group. Uh, if you look back at three-year, one-year holding periods, Vanguard comes out ahead on those two. So, I'm just going to keep this simple. Vanguard has the best performance, so VFVA is my winner. That takes us to the mystery category where our judges can pick a single factor or multiple factors that they feel are important to today's showdown. So, David, what is your mystery battle category and which of these four ETFs wins it? Yeah, my mystery category is going to be volatility, and this kind of piggybacks off of the uh, the discussion of performance that we just had because... If you look at the volatility of returns, uh, the Vanguard Fund has the best absolute performance, but it actually has the worst risk-adjusted performance. It actually has a fair uh, amount of extra volatility to get those returns. So 
It actually has the lowest sharp ratio uh, within this group of four. VLU from Spider actually has the best risk adjusted returns, even though its uh, its absolute returns are, are just a little more modest. So uh, I think if you're paying attention to volatility, you want to limit your risk. And I think that should be a consideration, especially considering, you know, we may be entering the most uh, agreed upon recession in, in history over the next 12 months or so. I think investors should pay attention to downside risk. Um, and as far as, you know, risk adjusted returns, VLU does the best job. So as far as controlling volatility, minimizing drawdowns, uh, VLU is going to be my winner in terms of uh, risk control. Tom, you're up next. Your mystery battle category, what is it? And which of these ETFs wins it? So I actually will Go ahead and disagree with David on something. I'm looking the for the first disagreement hot- of 2023. <laughs> yeah, right. Yay! Um, I, I want the high octane stuff. Um, and so we'll look at what I think is important with value ETFs is looking at sort of factor loadings. So great, you have all the different stocks in there and the different sector exposures, but how much, and Dave was alluding to it, like how much value is actually in this value ETF? So if you run this through like a factor tool, factor loading, the Vanguard one has the highest loading. So you end up the Vanguard's the highest, the Avantis one sort of in the middle, and the other two are sort of lower. And that feeds into his comment about lower vol. But I think if, if you're betting on a value combat, uh, comeback, um, I want the highest sort of high conviction bets, has the lowest overlap to the S&P of any of these funds, has a higher loading. So in terms of an actual, like, what is getting me the most sort of the closest to the value factor, however you want to define it. But uh, I think VF. VA does the best job. So if I'm betting on a value rebound, I want the high octane stuff. And in this case, it's going to be the Vanguard fund. Well, we're going to give our judges one final chance to weigh in with their overall battle winner. And if you think that you know how this is going to go down, let's not take the words out of our judge's mouth. Let's hear it straight from the horse's mouth. Although I'm not calling you guys horses. (laughs) Tom, (laughs) give us your overall battle winner. Okay, I've been called worse, Ron, so it's fine. <laughs> um, I, overall, I really like the Vanguard one. I know that they, you know, it's hard to compete with Vanguard, but they have a very well constructed product here. Um, I think they, they, you know, they have other value ETFs, but this one is active. It's high octane. It's quant driven. It's high active share. Uh, I think it checks all the boxes that I'd be looking for into some, you know, for a value ETF. So overall, I really like the Vanguard uh, ETF as my overall pick. David, your final chance to weigh in with your overall winner. Give it to us. Well, Tom and I can take our disagreements offline about things, but uh I'm actually going to give the win to VLU just very slightly over the Vanguard ETF. I, I like the Vanguard ETF too. I think it uh, I think it does really well for all the reasons that Tom mentioned. But I'm just going to pound the drum again on uh, risk-adjusted returns. I think it uh, does a little bit of a better job. And uh, again, I, I pay attention to downside risk and downside volatility. And I, you know, personally speaking, I like to uh, try to focus on that and limit it as much as possible. So, um, you know, I'd, I'd be comfortable going with either VLU or VFVA in this battle. I'm just going to give the slight uh, slight nod to VLU for, uh, for my choice. Well, our judges have spoken, and according to my battle scorecard, this is a split decision, folks. And if you look at this battle scorecard, you'll see that our judges, for the most part, agreed on VFVA from Vanguard. But it was really that mystery category which swayed David in favor of VLU from State Street Global Advisors. He liked the fact that that ETF, he feels, will have uh, a better uh, future, especially if markets get even rockier than they are right now. He also mentioned that that ETF had better risk-adjusted returns, although absolute returns not so good compared to the others. But again, you got to look at the big picture. He also mentioned uh, that... uh, that that ETF follows the S&P 1500, which remember, folks, that's an all-cap approach. Tom also mentioned the same thing. VFVA has that similar approach of all-cap. So you got large, mid, and small caps in there. Um, and then keep an eye out for that energy exposure. Uh, Tom mentioning VFVA has the highest exposure to energy stocks. That was a top-performing S&P 500 sector in 2022. If that trend continues... That should be supportive of VFVA uh, looking ahead. 
But for the most part, all of these ETFs, since they're tilted on the value side, do have a heavier exposure to financial stocks uh, than uh, some of the other ETF factors out there. So just keep that in mind. Well, again, thank you, David and Tom, for your thoughtful and timely analysis for today's value investing orgy. And I hope value investors appreciated the great analysis and, and liked it because I did. Thanks again, guys, for the great work. Yeah, thanks so much. Thanks, Ryan. Ryan, appreciate it. Be sure to visit the description section below. We've got research links to our judges, so get in touch. And while you're there, check out the link to our program sponsor, Direction Investments. You'll also see a, a section where we've got viewer resources, including a registration link to our upcoming retirement planning webinars in January and February. So check that out. I'm Ron DeLegge. Thanks for watching ETF Battles. We will see you next time. 